Having looked at the expression for uh, pressure, uh, which is uh, given as uh, P equal to uh, P 0 plus rho G H, uh, this being the atmospheric pressure as we have discussed and this is the pressure due to the liquid column of height h. Um, we uh, now want to uh, do some problems uh, using this formula that is uh, pressure due to uh, liquids uh, which is given by this. So, let us uh, do a problem uh, which says that the surface of water water in a storage tank is is a twenty meter above the water tap in the kitchen of a house. So, this is understandable that uh, there is a storage over its storage uh, water storage tank which is uh, there on the terrace um, and the distance where the kitchen is or the kitchen tap is uh, the storage tank is located 20 meters above the kitchen tap. So, the question is uh, calculate the pressure at the tap tap and of course, given that uh, density of water <coughs> equal to 1 into 10 cube kg per meter cube. Uh, this density is uh, denoted by uh, a quantity called as rho, which almost looks like p, but please do not uh, 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 distinguish this from P, it is called rho R H O. So, this is equal to rho of water. So, now um, the pressure at the surface of the tank that is uh, at the surface of water inside the tank. Um, so, there is atmospheric pressure and the same atmospheric pressure also is there at when the water is issuing out from the tap. So, the essentially the pressure difference is simply given by. Um, so, delta P is the pressure difference which is simply given by rho G into H, where rho is of uh, that of water. Uh, so, this is equal to <coughs> 1 into 10 cube kg per meter cube. Uh, g is 9.8 meter per second square and h here is 20 meters. So, if you do this, it becomes 1.96 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square 
which is also called as 1.96 into 10 to the power 5 Pascals. So, this is the uh, pressure difference that is there at the uh, between the surface of the uh, water level uh, inside the tank to the tap um, the nozzle of the tap from which water issues out. Uh, so, this is a simple uh, plug in type of uh, example, let us do another one. Again a plug in type however, uh, it is related to human body again. So, what is the uh, difference in blood pressure between the top of the head and the bottom of the feet. of a 1.60 meter tall person standing vertically. Uh, so, so, there is a person who is uh, 1.60 meters tall and uh, you are needed to find the, uh, the pressure, the blood pressure, uh, the difference in the blood pressure between the top of his head from the bottom of his feet. Um, and uh, the person is assumably standing vertically. Uh, now, the, uh, the input that needs to be given in this case is the density of blood and uh, uh, just keep in mind that this density of blood that I am going to give you uh, is actually the uh, average density of blood because the uh, blood consists of the blood plasma which has a little less density as compared to the other cells that uh, uh, make up for the blood which has a little more density. So, this is the average density of blood which is uh, 1060 kg per meter cube. Just take a note that uh, this value for water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So, uh, blood is a uh, little more dense than water. So, again uh, the pressure difference is given by uh, delta P it is equal to rho G H. Uh, rho for blood is given as 1060 kg per meter cube with a G to be 9.8 meter per second square multiplied by 1.60 meter and this comes out as uh, 1.6620.8 Newton per meter square. Okay, so, uh, this is the, uh, the blood pressure difference uh, between the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Um, so, let us do another problem. And the problem uh, concerns um, which all of you might have felt at uh, times that you have uh, either um, traveled up uh, in a through a hill and or um, travel down very quickly uh, descended from a hill very quickly or 
it might have happened when you have traveled in an airplane. Um, inside the airplane, uh, the pressure is um, pretty much taken care of, but still uh, one feels uncomfortable at times because there is a pressure build up uh, in the ears. Um, and what happens is that uh, there is a pop in the ear, which means that uh, some air is released to equalize the pressure between the inner part of the eardrum to the outer part of the eardrum. And uh, this, uh, as I told you that this can also happen if you are climbing a hill or you are getting down from a hill very quickly and uh, this uh, can cause uh, this uh, popping of the air as it says. Um, <coughs> so, if it does not pop, then there is a uh, pressure that builds up or rather there is a force that is developed and that is why the ear starts aching. So, the question is um, uh, what is the, so, so when you not what is, when you uh, run up a tall hill or run down the hill quickly, the ears pop and as I told pop means that some air is released from the ears um, and uh, this is due to the build up of the pressure uh, due to that, uh, that the body takes a little while to get accustomed to uh, suppose you are climbing down a hill very quickly or you are running down a hill very quickly. So, the pressure difference that you initially had and after you have gotten down uh, quite a few uh, say 1000 feet quickly. So, then uh, this pressure build up can happen. Uh, the question is suppose this did not happen did not happen what would be the force force on the eardrum eardrum of area 0 0.5 centimeter square uh, if a change in altitude which means height altitude or you can just simply write it as height um, of 1000 meter takes place. So, if there is a, a height difference of 1000 meter that takes place and if the ears do not pop, uh, so what is the pressure developed and uh, because of that pressure developed, what is the force that is ex exerted on the eardrum. So, again P equal to uh, the pressure is equal to H rho and G. Uh, now, it is has to be given that the rho of air that is the density of air it is 1.29 kg per meter cube. So, 1000 meter uh, multiplied by 1.29 uh, kg per meter cube uh, multiplied by 9.8 meters per second square and this thing when you calculate it, it comes out to be 12642 Newton per meter square. Uh, so, this is the pressure 
that is developed between the inner part and the outer part of the eardrum. Because of this pressure, there is going to be a force which is equal to the pressure multiplied by the area which is 1, 2, 6, 4, 2 Newton per meter square and you multiply it by 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. Uh, so, the meter square will cancel and this becomes equal to 6.32 Newton. So, uh, this 6.32 Newton uh, is, uh, is a force that is exerted on the ear. Uh, now, you can take this as uh, suppose just for the argument sake or making matters simple, let us take g equal to 10 for now and which means that there is a weight of 0 0.6 kg that is exerted on the, uh, on the ears. And, uh, um, this is uh, most of the times this is not uh, an unbearable uh, situation, but however, uh, uh, you would find actually uh, children crying inside the airplane and the reason uh, more often than not is going to be because of this pressure that develops and um, that uh, creates uh, an ache uh, in the and the child uh, cries. So, uh, we have looked at mainly uh, so far the density of liquids, uh, we have defined density and we have also looked at uh, density of solids, liquids and gases and we saw that the density of gases is uh, at least something like 3 orders of magnitude less than that of uh, the other uh, solids and liquids. And uh, we have also learned about specific gravity uh, and also we looked at uh, the pressure that is exerted by a liquid column of height h or the pressure that is felt at a point uh, inside the liquid at a depth h from the surface um, and used that result to compute some simple problems so far. We have talked about the, the pressure due to uh, liquids uh, inside a, a container which is uh, uh, full of liquid and uh, then we have calculated what is the force at a depth h from the surface. Now, let us look at the uh, pressure due to air or our atmosphere. So, we will uh, talk about the atmospheric pressure. However, atmospheric pressure uh, has a large variation with the height uh, measured say from the surface of the earth. And uh, uh, so, it is not like really like liquids where the, uh, the pressure uh, really uh, does not or rather the density does not change much. Uh, here of course, the density will change a lot uh, given the fact that uh, air is uh, significantly compressible. So, it is uh, done in the uh, spirit of a problem, I think this is uh, a better way of doing this problem. So, we will write down the problem and then uh, it is not a, a numerical problem, it is only a problem of finding the pressure um, in the earth's atmosphere as a function of uh, the height measured from the sea level. So, determine the variation in pressure in the earth's atmosphere as a function of as a function of of the height y above sea level uh, 
assuming g to be constant constant means constant over the distance that we are considering. So, over a height h measured from the sea level. So, g is not varying and that the density of air of air is is proportional to pressure. So, we uh, need to know the variation of pressure uh, as a function of the height, height being measured from the sea level. Uh, there is an uh, additional part to this problem which says also at what elevation elevation is the air pressure is the air pressure equal to half the pressure at sea level. And uh, the atmospheric pressure, let us just call it as P uh, atmospheric or ATM, uh, it is equal to 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square, same as Pascal. So, uh, we have the first part is about deriving uh, an expression for p as a function of y and the second part is that at what y or what height the pressure is equal to half of the atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure is given there. Okay. Uh, so, the clue is given in this uh, uh, part that the density of air is proportional to pressure. This you would learn in a different context, we will not go into that, we will take this uh, data and write that uh, rho by rho 0 which is equal to p by p 0. So, this p atmosphere will often be written as p 0. So, that is the um, standard atmospheric pressure, so we will write it as p 0. So, rho is the density at the height that we intend to find, rho 0 is the density um, at the sea level, p 0 is the pressure at the sea level and p is what we intend to find. So, we have learnt earlier that d p d y equal to minus rho g, this is how the pressure varies with uh, height uh, by and you can you can get that p as a way, uh, function of y by solving this differential equation. This uh, we have elaborately discussed earlier. So, now I am going to replace this rho by using this equation. Let us call this as equation 1 and let us call this as equation 2. So, I will put equation uh, 1 uh, rho from equation 1 and put it into 2. So, rho from equation 1 comes out to be p over p 0 into rho 0. So, that will give me putting it in equation 2 is uh, d p by d p d y equal to minus p over p 0 multiplied by rho 0 and a g. Let us call this as equation 3. Um, now, since I need to solve this equation, there is a d p here and a p here. So, let us take all the 
uh, the pressures in one side. So, d p over p becomes equal to minus uh, rho 0 g divided by p 0 and uh, d y. Now, uh, this equation should be the guiding equation to get p as a function of y. So, I can integrate it both sides in order to solve for p as a function of y. Now, in order to integrate you need to put limits and the limits are as follows that let us take uh, the y equal to 0 to be the sea level. So, this is the sea level and where p equal to p 0. So, this is the atmospheric pressure. So, this is my uh, the height is 0 at the sea level and th there the p equal to p 0 and at a general height y I want to find what is the pressure that is developed. So, I will integrate this from p 0 to p. So, that the lower limit of d y goes to 0 and it goes up to y. So, uh, and uh, uh, remember that all these quantities are constants where rho 0 is the density uh, at the sea level. And if I solve this equation uh, rather than evaluate the integral it becomes log because you see the d p over p is a log p. Now, putting the limits upper lower limit and lower limit. So, log p by p 0 equal to a minus uh, rho 0 g by p 0 and uh, y. So, this is the equation that we need to keep in mind. Uh, there is a negative sign there which has the same meaning as we have discussed in the case of solids uh, that <coughs> the p becomes. Um, so, p uh, is uh, p decreases. Um, so, the atmospheric pressure decreases with increase in height or the other way around the atmospheric pressure increases as y is decreased. Now, this can be written uh, in a little more compact fashion. So, let us erase this, but keep in mind that we have to calculate the second part which is a numerical problem, where uh, you need to find the height at which uh, the atmosphere the pressure is half of that of the atmospheric pressure. So, this uh, is equal to. So, this is log of p minus log p 0 which is equal to uh, <coughs> or uh, let us uh, write this as So, I am skipping one step and I you can write it as exponential minus uh, rho 0 g uh, by p 0 and y. So, this is how the pressure varies with the height y measured from the sea level. So, the pressure as I told you that as I um, increase my height the pressure decreases and at y equal to 0 which is the um, sea level. So, if I put y equal to 0 here p will become equal to p 0 and the decrease of pressure here is exponential. So, the pressure decreases exponentially at the height is increased starting from the uh, sea level. So, let us do the numerical part of the problem for which we need to calculate this constant uh, as per the given problem all these quantities are constant and uh, so, rho 0 which is the 
density of water or density of air, I am so sorry, density of air at the um, sea level is 1.29 uh, kg per meter cube multiplied by 9.8 meter per second square divided by P0 which is equal to um, <coughs> 1.013 um, uh, into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square and this has a value 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 4 and this will have uh, an unit of meter inverse or 1 over meter. So, that this uh, y being uh, measured in meters will cancel this and your exponential will have to be uh, the argument of the exponential will have to be dimensionless. So, in order to calculate where my p becomes p 0 over 2, I need to find that y where my p becomes equal to p 0 by 2. So, in order to find that I simply take this equation and put p 0 by 2 on the left hand side which becomes p 0 and exponential minus uh, this quantity 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter inverse and y. So, this gives me uh, I can take a log of both sides to calculate y, y becomes log of 2. 1.25 and 10 to the power minus 4 meter inverse. Uh, do you remember what is log 2 from your radioactivity classes? So, log 2 is equal to 0 0.693. So, this is equal to 0 0.693 divided by 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter. Uh, so, the meter will go up and this becomes equal to 5550 meter. So, this is the height at which the pressure uh, falls to half the atmospheric pressure and sometimes it becomes important to know what is the uh, this height expressed in feet because sometimes um, especially in uh, um, the mountains and uh, tall hills are measured in feet. So, this is actually equal to uh, 18,000 feet. So, at 18,000 feet the pressure falls to half the atmospheric pressure. So, this is the reason that the mountaineers or the mountain climbers they carry oxygen tanks along with them because it is quite difficult to breathe uh, at an altitude of 18,000 feet. So, let us uh, discuss now two things. One is atmospheric pressure, which we have been discussing and, and gauge pressure. We will tell you what gauge pressure is. So, the atmospheric pressure um, at the sea level which we just called as P 0 is equal to 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square. In fact, there is uh, another unit other than the Newton per meter square or the Pascal that we have talked about so far there is another unit that is uh, preferred more by the meteorological department which is called as bar and one bar. So, bar one bar equal to uh, 1 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square. So, in fact, the pressure atmospheric pressure at the sea level is slightly more than a bar the difference between 1 and 1.013. <coughs> so, <coughs> now you understand that this is quite a large pressure. Okay? 
um, the large pressure means uh, the if it corresponds to a force which uh, we know the relation between force and pressure so f is equal to uh, p into a so if the pressure is this much you know that the force is going to be also quite large so how does human body accepts or adjust to this kind of pressure and the answer is that all the living cells in our body um, gives an equal and opposite uh, pressure rather uh, a pressure which is uh, appropriate to adjust the pressure that is enormous pressure that we have outside. So, there are so pressures in the cells because of uh, various things that are inside the cells there is a, a cell pressure which adjusts uh, with the pressure that is outside. Uh, you have seen a balloon uh, which is uh, given a, a certain uh, when you fill in air uh, it retains at least for some time and uh, uh, this is um, the, the so basically that uh, filled in because of the shape of the balloon it retains the extra pressure or rather it withstands the atmospheric pressure for some time and over a period of time it uh, kind of gets deflated and same with the tires that you we have uh, in the in the cars and in uh, other automobiles that these cars are also uh, given uh, pressure um, the filled in air and because of this robust structure it retains the air for quite uh, a number of days even when it is in running condition. So, how do we uh, so there is you have seen that when you go to actually fill in air in your uh, cycle tire or your uh, motorcycle tire or the car tires uh, they measure it with a device which is called as a tire gauge. And this tire gauge measures the pressure that is uh, there inside the tube and uh, it is actually specified that suppose we talk about uh, uh, a vehicle a car which is smaller car uh, requires probably lesser pressure uh, in its tires than a, a big truck needs much more pressure in its tire because it carries a lot of load. So, there is a specific amount of air that needs to be filled in uh, anything uh, more is not of course good, but anything less is also not good because uh, of the normal functioning of the vehicle would be affected if the tire pressures are continuously less than what uh, 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 is prescribed for them. So, the tire gauge is put in to measure the pressure of the tire. Remember the tire gauge actually measures uh, the pressure over and above the atmospheric pressure. So, what I mean to say is that so, a tire gauge measures a pressure P which is equal to the atmospheric pressure uh, and plus the gauge pressure. So, if a tire gauge a tire gauge measures a pressure of if a tire gauge measures a measures the pressure of pressure of of 200 kilo Pascals. I keep shuttling between this Newton per meter square and Pascals because they are same. Then the actual pressure is Two hundred kilo Pascal plus hundred kilo Pascal, which is this. Um, <coughs> I'm taking this and this to be nearly same. The atmospheric pressure. I'm taking it as uh, loosely one into ten to the power five Newton per meter square, or one into ten to the power five Pascal. So this is actually three hundred kilo Pascal. So the the gauge the tire gauge the instrument that they put inside the nozzle of the tire to measure the tire pressure will measure this. However, the actual pressure is uh, 300 kilo Pascal including the atmospheric pressure. 
So far we have seen uh, what uh, is uh, pressure or rather the pressure exerted by fluids um, both for uh, pressure of uh, a liquid as well as pressure of uh, air and uh, which what we also have uh, defined is pressure due to the atmosphere which is called as atmospheric pressure. Uh, now, the question is uh, how is pressure measured? Uh, there are many devices that are uh, invented to measure pressure. Uh, we will only uh, discuss only two of them here. One is uh, a very simple uh, device such as a U-tube. So, we are talking about measurement of pressure. So, this is a U tube uh, and it has a liquid that is uh, present inside this. So, this is a liquid which is usually mercury and uh, so mercury is filled uh, inside the U tube and this is where the pressure is measured. and let this pressure be P. So, we have uh, P is equal to P 0 plus rho G H. So, the pressure that you measure here is related to the height difference of the uh, fluid or, or of the liquid that is there inside the tube and uh, so we have discussed that there is a, a, a gauge pressure so this rho g h is called as a gauge pressure and the total pressure is actually uh, the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure so, this H is the height difference is the height difference between the two hands of the U tube uh, and this is the pressure that is measured here P 0 is the atmospheric pressure, uh, rho is the density of the liquid that is there inside as we told that most of the times one uses mercury as a liquid inside H is the height difference between the left and the right arm. In case the left arm has a level which is lower than that of the right arm, then the pressure that is measured here will be lower than the atmospheric pressure and uh, just as the case here when you have this height to be positive that is the left arm has more height than the right arm, then the pressure is said to be uh, more than the atmospheric pressure and there is a positive sign that exists between them. All right. So, this is how uh, one uh, measures pressure, this is one of the ways to measure pressure and um, there are other ways of course, we are coming to that in a while, but this gauge pressure or this rho g h factor is the important thing and to know that uh, to know the exact pressure we just need to add the atmospheric pressure to the gauge pressure. So, at times in fact, this product of rho g and h uh, that is density multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity divided by the multiplied by the, uh, the height difference between them between the two hands is simply represented in terms of the height. So, when you say that so many millimeter of mercury 
we really mean that you have to multiply to get the exact pressure difference you have to multiply the density of mercury by the way mercury is written with the symbol hg so hg is uh, capital h small g that's the symbol for mercury in the periodic table <coughs> so 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 many uh, millimeter of mercury means that the pressure difference will have to be uh, represented if you want the exact pressure difference then you have to multiply it by the rho and the g with that many millimeter so as to get the exact pressure either in Newton per meter square or Pascal or bar whichever unit you want to uh, <coughs> express it in. Similarly, one can also use uh, water and you can also use water in place of mercury. Uh, the only uh, simplicity that happens is that the density of water is, uh, uh, is known always uh, and it is simple to remember as well and uh, that is equal to um, 10 cube kg per meter cube as opposed to mercury which is uh, more dense than that which is 13.6 uh, kg per uh, meter cube in any case. So, uh, there is a unit it is called the mmhg. So, 1 mmhg, mm is for millimeter, hg is mercury. So, 1 mmhg is equivalent to a pressure of, uh, so this is 13.6 uh, 13 into 10 cube kg per meter cube g to be 9.8 meter per second square and 1 millimeter of mercury. So, we will take 1 millimeter which is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 meter and this is equal to 133 Newton per meter square. And this has a special name called as T O R R equal to 1 torque. So, this is uh, after the name of uh, a scientist called Evangelista Torricelli uh, who was there between um, uh, 1608. So, E Torricelli Uh, 1608 to 1647. So, this is uh, equal to 1 tor which means it is equal to 1 millimeter of mercury. So, let us see that we have introduced many units of uh, pressure. Let us see what are the differences uh, between them and uh, also vis a vis the atmospheric pressure. we discuss different units of pressure. So, we have one atmospheric pressure, we will simply write it as one atm means atmospheric pressure. Uh, it is equal to 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square, which is equal to also equal to 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 Pascals, which is equal to 101.3 kilo Pascals. Um, now, we have also uh, introduced earlier another unit of pressure which uh, is used by the uh, meteorological department to talk about uh, the development of pressure or low pressure in um, areas uh, adjoining the sea. 
uh, while uh, talking about the climates. So, there are says one bar which is equal to 1 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square. So, if you see that uh, the atmospheric pressure is slightly more than a bar which is what we have mentioned earlier. So, this is equal to 1.013 bar uh, which is same as we will see that in just a uh, while that it is equal to 76 centimeter of the mercury. Uh, just as we told that 1 millimeter mercury. So, this is the one atmosphere is equal to 76 centimeter of mercury. So, the atmospheric pressure is same as the pressure that is exerted by um, a 76 centimeter high column of mercury, uh, which is of course, equal to 760 millimeter of mercury and that is equal to by just the definition that we have talked about this is equal to 760 tor uh, which is equal to 1.03 into 10 to the power 4 uh, millimeter of water at 4 degree centigrade. So, it is one atmospheric pressure is not only uh, can be represented in uh, a column of mercury, but it can also be represented as a column of water. The water that uh, uh, the pressure that is exerted by uh, water of uh, <coughs> this much of height, which is 1.03 into 10 to the power 4 millimeter. So, these are the interconversion uh, of uh, different units of pressure and sometimes they are quite important. For example, we will give you uh, the example of blood pressure. So, if you go to a doctor uh, and the doctor measures your blood pressure, uh, good but blood pressure which means uh, healthy blood pressure is uh, 120 by 80 which is what they will tell you and uh, they simply write as 120 by 80 in the medical records uh, that are um, uh, that are specific to you and they do not mention most of the time they do not mention what it is, but it is actually 120. So, this is 120 and 80 are the ranges of blood pressure um, and this is actually in millimeter of mercury. So, it is 120 millimeter of mercury for the higher one and 80 millimeter of mercury for the lower one. So, uh, however, the atmospheric pressure is much more than the pressure that the blood uh, exerts on the walls of the artery as the blood flows through the body. However, we have seen that because the living cells of the body exerts pressure in order to combat the pressure from outside that is from the atmosphere, uh, we uh, maintain the shape that we are in and do not buckle to the pressure. Let us now talk about the second um, instrument by which pressure is measured uh, which is called as the barometer. <coughs> And uh, we are going to specifically talk about mercury barometer. So, you take a tube like this full of mercury here. We have told that mercury is represented by Hg and the density of mercury is equal to 13.6 into 10 cube kg per meter cube. So, it is actually quite a dense liquid. Now, if you invert this on a vessel 
containing mercury, then this is what is going to happen. So, I have taken a vessel which is completely full of mercury and invert it on this. So, which means that it will look like this. Okay. And what is going to happen is that there will be, uh, so given that this tube is long enough, um, say something like a uh, meter, uh, then it is seen that the mercury is fills up to a certain level and there is a vacant portion on top of that where there is really a vacuum. So, P equal to 0 is a vacuum and the height of the liquid column stands at 76 centimeter. Okay. So, 76 centimeter of mercury as we have said is the atmospheric pressure that is in other words a 76 uh, centimeter column of mercury, 76 centimeter column of mercury exerts the same pressure as the atmospheric pressure. So, the, the pressure here is the same as the atmospheric pressure. Uh, when you have inverted this tube, the, the whole thing is, uh, so there is the, the mercury is static, it's come to an equilibrium and there is a, a void that is created where there is a vacuum, where the pressure is equal to 0, the height of the mercury inside the tube is at 76 centimeter. So, I repeat once more a 76 centimeter column of mercury exerts the same pressure as the atmospheric pressure or one atmospheric pressure. So, 76 uh, centimeter of mercury is said to be as we said that we will only quote the height. So, 76 centimeter of mercury equal to 1 atmospheric pressure. Now, suppose you want to fill it with water, not with mercury and if it is with water which is H 2 O which has a density of only 1 into 10 cube kg per meter cube and in that case the height of the water column that you need is equal to. So, height is equal to 10 to the power uh, 10.3 meter. So, instead of 76 centimeter if you use water you would need a height the column of water should have a height 10.3 meter, which means it is a very long, it has to be a very long tube and uh, um, uh, this much of uh, that is 10.3 meter of water column exerts the same pressure as one atmospheric pressure. Uh, this has some uh, implications in uh, designing vacuum pumps, uh, no matter what uh, uh, however good a vacuum pump is it cannot uh, lift water uh, to a height more than 10 meters because of this reason. And uh, so, uh, sucking out water or draining out water from a deep tube well which is more than 10 meter is a problem using vacuum pumps. 